This is the new Cooper Tavascan, a fully electric crossover coupe style SUV, which has plenty of EV driving range available. And I'm gonna tell you some indicative pricing that might give you an idea of what you can expect to pay for this all new model from the Spanish brand in this preview. And look, I'm gonna be driving this car very shortly. So make sure you've rang the bell to keep up to date with all of my content. Let's take a little preview look at this Tavascan, shall we? All the detailed pricing and specs for this model range is still to be 100% confirmed, but there will be two different versions available at launch. The Endurance, which is the entry-level model, you can expect it to start around $70,000, and you're still gonna get heaps of standard equipment for that money. And then there'll be the dual motor version, which is this one here, the VZ, and it adds extra power, but it also makes it a lot faster. It also makes it all-wheel drive, and it's gonna cost a little bit more, as you can expect. Uh, probably more towards $80,000 than $70,000. So, look, I think that this value equation does stack up pretty well, and I'm gonna tell you about why I think that is when it comes to the powertrain right now. So there are gonna be two different powertrain options available for this model range. The entry-level version won't have a motor under the bonnet because it will be rear-wheel drive only and it will still have a huge amount of power and torque, 210 kilowatts and 545 newton meters. And it should be able to do naught to 100 in about 6.8 seconds for that entry-level endurance version. But if you want the fast one, this one here, which adds an electric motor at the front axle, you're looking at more power, in fact, the most powerful Cooper ever, 250 kilowatts, 545 Newton meters, so the same amount of torque, but more power, and a 0 to 100 time in the five second range. So it will be a fast and hopefully fun car to drive as well. Both versions of this car are gonna come with the same size of battery pack, a 77 kilowatt hour NMC lithium ion battery pack. And that is a pretty decent size, not necessarily huge, but it does offer pretty decent EV driving range. You'll see the numbers for both the Endurance and the VZ on your screen now. And yes, around the 500K mark, even for the performance oriented version is still pretty good, I reckon. Now, when it comes to charging, you've got a couple of options available to you. 11 kilowatt AC charging as standard, which is great. If you've got three phase power at home, it should mean pretty quick charging overnight. And if you have DC charging in mind, well, the rapid charging rate is 135 kilowatts. And Cooper says that that means that you should be able to replenish the battery by about 100 kilometers for every seven minutes of charging. Or if you're doing the 10 to 80% charge rate, it'll be able to do that in less than half an hour, according to the brand. If you can find a charger that works, of course. This looks the part, doesn't it? It is a coupe style crossover electric SUV. And like I said, that is maybe a little bit niche upon niche, but it looks fantastic. And some of the styling details here are amazing. Look at these triangular LED elements in the headlights. You've got this amazing aerodynamic element to the bonnet as well. So air actually flows up through there to make it more aerodynamic than it otherwise might've been. And the Coefficient of drag, if that matters to you, is 0.26, which is actually very, very efficient for an electric vehicle. And it is a big vehicle. It's about 4.6 meters in length on a pretty lengthy wheelbase, as you can see for yourself. And it's got the uh, helmet look in terms of the design. So you've got the blacked out A pillar there and the really shapely rear end. And yes, it isn't necessarily gonna be the most practical option for a family or something like that, but hey, Cooper is not all about families. It's about cars and drivers, and I reckon that it looks absolutely fantastic. But I'm gonna show you in a sec that it does still have a lot of practicality on its side. But first, let me show you in the boot. How about that, eh? Illuminated badge, which is kind of cool. And in the boot, you can see for yourself that you do have quite a lot of cargo capacity in this pre-production model. Yes, it does have a adjustable floor, which means that you've got hidden storage underneath. And underneath there, no, you won't find a spare, sadly. But you do have a little bit of extra storage space as well. So you can store your cables and that sort of stuff underneath the boot floor. And it is still a very practical size and shape of boot, I would say. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about the practicality in the interior in the next section of this video. 
Yep, the steering wheel's on the wrong side. Sorry about that. Uh, I'll work on making sure that it's on the right side next time around, but it gives you an idea of what the interior design of this electric vehicle is like. And I reckon that it does have some serious wow factor in terms of the tech and also this amazing looking spine that runs down from the screen through the middle of the car, like an actual spine in an animal or a human or I guess any vertebrate. But hey, uh, what do you think about this design? I reckon that it looks great. And I also love the fact that, look, Cooper has really put a bit of focus on the design touches that really stand out. So you've got this copper finishing across this blade that runs all the way over to the other side. And just have a look at some of this ambient lighting design. It absolutely has wow factor to it. And I reckon that it looks bloody amazing. The perceived wow factor when you sit into this car is excellent. And look, there's also a fair bit of wow factor to this 15 inch touchscreen media system. I'll do a bit more detail on this screen when I do a full drive review in Australia in a couple of months time, but it does have some serious, amazing design. It is a big, big screen, very quick to respond, and Cooper has actually listened to customer uh, feedback or complaints, you could say, uh, to try and make things a bit easier to interact with for this new generation of infotainment. And look, there are a bunch of different menus upon menus that you can jump through here, and I'm not going to go into heaps and heaps of detail just yet. Um, it feels weird doing it with my right hand. That's uh, another thing about this uh, left-hand drive model. But you can expect something very, very similar to this to come to Australia in a few months time. 15 inch screen, it'll have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, sat nav as well, and heaps of other features in the screen. But I'll do more detail on it when I get a chance to drive an Aussie spec car. Right, there's also a digital instrument display for the driver, and not that you can really see it. Let me see if I can get it. Uh, yet there is a head up display there as well. Just excuse all the foot traffic outside. Now, it is definitely an interesting design and not necessarily unfamiliar from other vehicles in the Cupra lineup. And the tactility of the controls, everything looks and feels fantastic. And it's gonna be a pretty practical car for your family as well. There's storage down here, wireless phone charger. You've got these cup holders between the seats. And also there's a covered center console bin as well. And you've got bottle holders in the doors as you would expect. Look at those little sparkly lights. My kid is going to love those and I'm sure your kid will too or your inner child in fact. All right let's jump in the back seat and see if this coupe SUV is spacious enough for a six footer. Rightio, so let's have a look at the space in the back here. This seat is set for my driving position at 182 centimeters or six foot. I've got enough knee room. I've got enough foot room. Sorry about the shadows and also let me just show you the headroom in here. Look as I said, I'm not the shortest person, and there's plenty of headroom in the back here, even with this standard very large glass roof, which looks amazing and even has a shade, unlike a Tesla Model Y, which I think is actually pretty handy. Now, in terms of the amenities back here, you've got directional air vents, and in this high-grade version, there are outboard heated seats as well. There's USB ports down there, as you can see. Um, there's not too much, well, there's actually no transmission hump intrusion, so fitting three people across the back should be possible and you can expect things like uh, ISO fixed points in the window seats and three top tether points to be standard and also there'll be a flip down armrest as well with cup holders and a load through port or a ski port which does make a bit of a difference I reckon so look I reckon that this is definitely going to be practical enough for a lot of people in the market for an SUV of this size and I think that it's a very comfortable space to sit for someone my size too. So that's a preview of this new generation electric Cupra and I reckon that it does have a fair bit of appeal. It's design focused and still very spacious on the inside and it could be a really good option in the market depending on the price. Tell me what you think it should cost in the comments section below and also ring the bell to keep up to date with all of my content because I'll be driving this thing pretty soon. So thanks for watching. I'll see you when I see ya.